what are electrolyte solutions? There are strong electrolytes, weak electrolytes, and non-electrolytes, and that's what I'm gonna go over in this video. If you'd like a copy of this table, go to the description of this YouTube video below and print out those solution notes that go with all the solution videos I have on my YouTube channel. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about what compounds in general are each of these categories, some specific examples, um, a generic dissociation into ions if they do make ions, some examples of those, those dissociation reactions, if they conduct electricity, which is the biggest thing about electrolytes is they do conduct electricity and non-electrolytes do not. And we'll also ha uh, have some particle drawings. So I have some models here that I'd like you to then draw the particulate view of what that looks like once you have that solute, it dissolved in water and water would be the solvent and the solute would be the substance that goes into it that might become an electrolyte or make it an electrolyte. All right, so let's just get started. You can pause the video right here if you'd like to kind of take your time and write this down first, and then I'm gonna go through it with you. All right, so strong electrolytes are soluble ionic compounds, strong acids, and strong bases. So this is just a really short list of some soluble ionic compounds, sodium chloride, potassium iodide, magnesium nitrate, and copper two sulfate, and many more. This is the list of the strong acids. Some of you will have to actually memorize these. Hydrochloric acid, nitric acid, perchloric acid, chloric acid, sulfuric acid, hydrobromic acid, and hydroiodic acid. All right, next, you're gonna notice that the alkali and alkaline earth metals make a lot of hydroxides that are listed as strong. Sodium hydroxide, lithium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, rubidium hydroxide, cesium hydroxide, and then a few alkaline earth metals. So these are alkali metals, ions with hydroxide. These are alkaline earth, calcium, strontium, and barium. So calcium hydroxide, strontium hydroxide, and barium hydroxide are some also are also some uh, strong bases. These fully dissociate into ions, and I'll show you the examples with um, the actual, I'll show you like this, I'll show you actual examples, and then I'll model it with you. Weak electrolytes, they're soluble compounds that are only slightly soluble ionic compounds. So they're not fully soluble, they're only slightly soluble. And then common also are weak acids and weak bases. Now this is just a summary of some. Calcium sulfate, lead to chloride and barium carbonate are just a few of the slightly soluble ionic compounds that can become weak electrolytes because they're just soluble enough. And then this is just a small list of weak acids, hydrofluoric acid, acetic acid, nitrous acid, sulfurous acid, phosphoric acid, uh, chlorous acid, and hypochlorous acid, and then there's many more. All right, then for weak bases, they all have a nitrogen, and some common ones are ammonia, um, and then this is methylamine, pyridine, and ethylamine. They partially dissociate into ions and reach what's called equi equilibrium, which you might have to learn about in chemistry. So there's two arrows, and what that means is there's not all ions, there's some molecules left and some ions, okay? Next, polar covalent compounds would be also soluble in water, like methanol, ethanol, glucose, sucrose, and urea. The key here, the, he, the key here is that they do not dissociate into ions, so there are no ions to conduct electricity, so that's why they're called non-electrolytes. All right, let's get to the specific examples. Again, if you'd like to pause the video and write these down first. And then I'm going to model it with you. So sodium chloride would dissociate completely into sodium and chloride ions. Hydrochloric acid would do the same and same with lithium hydroxide. So let's just kind of model sodium chloride first. So let's say that's a chunk of sodium chloride and then I add some water. What happens is the water molecules will pull apart this crystalline lattice, which is part of a different video I have on solution formation. And I'm just going to do a couple. Um, and what happens is the water molecules will completely surround these ions and so really I would be using a lot more water but I'm just going to try to dissolve this whole thing quickly here and you'll see that the water molecules are kind of attracted a specific way with these ions I'm just going to leave that and say forget that one um, so what would happen again is the water molecules will completely um, what's called hydrate these ions and they'll keep them away from each other but they are completely 100% oops, dissociated you can see they kind of snap in if they're attracted correctly, depending on the polar shape of water. All right, so what about HCl? Now, because I have all these kind of linked up, I'm just gonna use just the molecules and you just kind of have to imagine the water, or draw the water. Um, and later on, maybe you'll have to, you know, talk about acids and bases and pH. So these dissociate completely, which means all of the bonds have been broken 
and they are loose in the water. So water molecules will be surrounding these. And then these hydrogen ions do react with the water, but we're just gonna ignore that portion and just say that, you know, if you drew some waters in here, just gonna put a couple in here, face them a specific way, um, it's 100% dissociated. So there's no molecules of HCl left. All right, next, let's move on to, and then you can do lithium hydroxide kind of on your own. This might be a little loud. Putting atoms away is noisy. All right, next, let's go to weak electrolytes. How are they a little different? Here's though the example, sorry, here's the examples. And I'm gonna grab my water molecules kind of back again, just at least a few of them. And what I'm going to model with you here is a hydrofluoric acid. So calcium sulfate is a slightly soluble ionic compound. So most of this is actually in the solid form. There's only a few ions. Hydrofluoric acid is the same thing. So most of it's going to stay molecular. So in, when you add water to it, what happens is only maybe one of these is going to dissociate and have the bond broken and interact with water. And the rest of these um, are just going to be in the water like that. But they're going to stay molecular. So kind of that's your, you know, your particulate view for that one. And then I just didn't feel like with the video being too long, I didn't want to um, do uh, ammonia. And it also does some unique things with water making ammonium ions and hydroxide. So that's a discussion for another day with weak, weak bases and weak acids. All right, how about some non-electrolytes? So here is the example. And here are my two cute little uh, methanol molecules. I'm gonna dump those out. And we grab some water molecules. And then here's sucrose and then urea, which is gonna be part of the demonstration that I have next. Uh, a macro scale demonstration, where right now I'm doing kind of a particle demonstration. So here's my methanols, and what happens is if I add water, they'll just dissolve and fit in the spaces between, you know, the water molecules. But really, there's not going to be any ions dissociated. They stay completely molecular. They're polar due to this negative end here and positive end there. Tracked to the water, again, which is part of another video I have on solution formation. And then that's pretty much it. And so I'm going to pull these off and get them out of here and get us ready for our demo. So in the demonstration, I'm gonna use sodium chloride. I'm gonna use urea, okay? And then because those are solids, I could show you those. And then you just have to trust me that I put um, some acetic acid in here, uh, similar to vinegar. And what I'm gonna do with these two though is I'm actually gonna dissolve these and go over some terms that are in another video just to review. So my solute is salt and urea. And we'll see if I make a saturated solution because I'll see solid at the bottom. Or maybe it'll completely dissolve. Remember, this one right here is the salt. It's completely making ions, 100%. Vinegar is partially dissociating into ions. And this one is going to have no ions. So when the urea dissolves, which you will see some of it dissolve. Um, I put a, quite a bit in there just to prove the conductivity here. All right, so here's my conductivity tester. I hope I can see it. I already made this video twice. <laughs> the first time the conductivity tester was actually not in the frame, so that's bad. Practice makes perfect, I guess. So I'm gonna take these stirring rods out. And then let's just start with the one that it should have no conductivity. This is gonna be our non-electrolyte. See if I can sneak it underneath here without spilling. I'm probably gonna spill some. So let me move this up just a tad, hoping it's still in the frame. I'm actually gonna take a peek above and make sure it is in the frame. Good, it is, just barely. Um, and you'll see that the light didn't go on and it definitely did dissolve. I added quite a bit. So you can see that most of what I dissolved, uh, put, sorry, most of what I put in there did dissolve, but we could probably say that that's a saturated solution. All right, making a mess here. Here's my acetic acid solution, which is a weak acid. And you can see, I'm just gonna take a peek again, make sure you can kind of see the light going on. Try not to shake too much on this ring stand here. There we go. And I did spill some, that's okay. And then last but not least, here's our salty water. And look at that, you can definitely tell there that that is definitely very conductive. That's your strong electrolyte because it's dissociated completely into ions. And remember vinegar is only gonna contaminate here a little bit, but that's okay. So you're gonna see that's a little brighter than it was before because I'm contaminating. But even with the contamination here, good, good discussion on contamination here. We shouldn't see any ions for this one even though there might be a few floating around that I added from the vinegar, not enough to create a, a, a strong or even a weak electrolyte, still stayed as a non-electrolyte, even with the contamination. All right, so again, the whole goal here was to fill this out. Let me grab this and unplug it so I don't hurt myself here and slide this out of the frame. So again, the whole goal was to fill this out. Wait, right on top of the beakers here. Let's slide those in here to the frame here. 
And let me take a peek. Yep, that looks pretty good. So we're, the goal is to, again, classify your strong electrolytes, weak electrolytes, and non-electrolytes. Write those dissociation reactions, kind of understand why they conduct electricity, and hopefully you have drawn some beautiful particle diagrams, as well as hopefully you enjoyed the demonstration that I showed you. All right, good luck, chemists. Again, remember, if you'd like a, com uh, a copy of this, it's in the description below called Solution Notes, and it goes along with a, a larger set of solution videos I have on my YouTube channel. Good luck, chemists.